Hi, my name is Tomo and uh, I decided to help a friend who has some issues around the house. Uh, he owns this house, it was built in the uh, 90s and his siding is failing. Uh, this is one of those uh, cardboard, I call it the cardboard siding because essentially it is cardboard. It's this engineered wood siding. Uh, it's straight up nailed to the studs. There is uh, already insulation in the wall, however, there are areas where insulation is missing, so we are fixing that problem too. Uh, we are going to use hardy planks. So, to have proper foundation for the hardy planks, we are going to install brand new sheets of OSB boards all the way around. And uh, after that, we are going to use uh, the home shield from Lowe's. Uh, I prefer the three foot wide ones because they are much easier to work with um, so this is the job today and uh, there's one important thing that uh, I kind of want kind of want to talk about it when you install hardy planks there are two ways to do that uh, most contractors what they do they install the planks first and then they put the the trim on the planks itself. The reason why they do that, so they can do super rough cuts. Most of the time they don't even use actual circular saws or any kind of saw to cut the planks or shears. They just core the planks with a knife and then they break it. And you can be off by basically inches, the trim is gonna cover it, right? Uh, that's not how most people do it. So the other way, which is the proper way, is to install the trim first, and then you make all the, you, you put, install the planks afterwards. Um, obviously you have to be much more precise because uh, every time a plank meets uh, trim, there has to be at least uh, a 1 16th or uh, 1 8th of an inch of a gap. Uh, between the trim and the plank. When you butt uh, planks to another plank, there's usually no gap. You're gonna see what to do uh, when we have that situation. So yeah, this is the job. You can see the house. This is a one-story house. I'm not gonna build a scaffold or anything. We just work off of these ladders. Uh, there are some areas where things penetrate the wall. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna treat that. And yeah, this is the job. That's why I never do horizontal pieces like that. It's excellent way to cover up a shitty job. But as you can see, over time it cracks. And the problem is that, you know, the two by four behind this, it's all the way up here. So at behind this edge, there's actually nothing that supports the siding. So you can see if I push on it, the gap increases. So it doesn't matter what you do this seam will always crack. That's why I never do horizontal. And you can see, you know, water once goes in, it doesn't have a way to evaporate. So it's gonna cause your siding to rot. Yeah, this is what you're gonna end up with. When you're removing trim, you always wanna cut the old caulk around the window, the fascia board. We're gonna also replace the fascia, but not today. So I, I'm gonna try to keep that edge clean. So cut the caulk with an exacto knife, very deep. So you don't tear off things. The other thing, when you remove the trim, you hammer your crowbar all the way in and you try to pull the trim away from the window or the fascia board. Because if you don't do that, the trim is going to bend up towards this and it can actually break, in this case, the fascia board or it can crack the window or do all kinds of stuff. So you always want to pull away whatever you're trying to protect and sometimes you have to cut this several times like so and when you're throwing down any piece of wood with nail try to make it so that it lands nailed down so you don't step into it. I don't throw away nails, try to keep it, because guess what, you're going to step into it. Okay, 
Hold on. Come on. There we go. Yay! One thing that contractors do all the time, they put the siding on first and then the 2x4 for the fascia board. So what we have to do, since I'm not going to pull that 2x4 off, we're going to cut the siding. And the way you do that is with one of these. I have this very aggressive blade and I just cut all the way. Try to go not too deep because I've seen it uh, where there were wires or, elect or, or uh, plumbing or something very close to that wall. You don't want to cut that. The other thing, these blades are very sensitive to heat, don't overheat them. Always get a feeling, if you can't hold your hand on it for more than a split sec, then you're in trouble. It's going to dull your blade faster. Very tricky board. Uh, on this house we have the electrical box and a whole bunch of stuff outside. Um, luckily, some of them they were either accessible by the customer so we could go in, remove the screws, uh, or the screws were outside. Super easy. However, this guy is tricky. This belongs to the city. You cannot open it. So what I normally do I uh, pull this away from the wall, basically ripping out the screws. And then to make sure that the screws, because again, you cannot open it, I don't want the screws to fall in because they can short out, burn down the house, customer would not be very happy with me. So, uh, what I do, I, I, I pull this box away, and then I make sure that the, the screws don't fall in, and you can see I tie a knot, all the way around to the other screw so the customer is gonna call the city uh, so they can open up the box and secure this uh, to the to the wall after the fact but this is how you do that you're not supposed to open it but you have to make sure that the screws don't fall in and with these you can kind of see that the weight of this is held by that pipe so I'm not worried about that box however I'm very worried about that and that these are super heavy so what i ended up doing i have two screws in that uh two by four underneath the uh soffit so um so i i hold i hold these up uh using you know a piece of string like that and then i take my uh multi-tool and I gently cut around you have to make sure I've seen that happening when you cut it you you cannot go deep I would rather leave a little bit of material but I try to avoid at all costs cutting deep because you have wires behind this you can accidentally cut that I've seen that happening you know the the uh the person who did it they just poof, run across the wire and they shorted it out big spark not a good thing so now we can just you know gently rip these off one at a time take everything out behind it and it's gonna be nice and neat
Yeah, uh, small things like this. This is cable. I talked to my friend and uh, what we will do, uh, this is a user accessible. I'm going to pull all these cable out so we can uh, feed all these cables through the OSB and the siding so that I don't have to notch it. Uh, I'm not going to touch the ground. I'm not going to cut it because it's ground. It's, it, it's, the, it's the safety ground. So I don't want to cut that. So I have to notch that. I transferred all the measurements from the wall and I'm going to make sure that uh, everything that I cut uh, is going to be all the, all the OSBs will meet on a stub uh, so uh, everything is going to be nicely supported um around the window i usually leave like a quarter inch gap so it's gonna be a good fit it's gonna go in
One thing I did on the concrete, I marked where the studs are. So and I did it on the concrete and the facial. So even when I put the OSB on and we put the home wrap on, I'm going to know exactly where to nail the hardy planks. Hardy planks, it's concrete, right? You have to hit the stud. Not the OSB, the stud. Second thing. You have to use hot tip galvanized ribbed nails. So this is a Hitachi. I modified it a little bit. I have a hook here so I can hang it. This is a two inch nail. Very important. Thing you you have to be really careful of uh, or aware is that there is plumbing and there is electrical wires loose in the walls. So what I did, uh, I took pictures of plumbing so I can go back anytime and check where they are. And also I transferred everything to the OSB. So even when I put the uh, home wrap on, I'm going to know where not to nail because it's going to show through that uh, wrap. So I'm not going to hit black marks. This is very important. You don't want to hit those because unfortunately they are very close to the edge. This is another interesting situation when we have uh, an electrical box. So I don't like to remove cables, especially if it's a uh, circuit breaker box or something like that um, it's gonna turn into a giant mess so what I normally do I uh, usually split the OSB board so I just remove this the old siding from behind the box and I depending on which side it's closest to or maybe top whatever I just split the board like so if it's a horizontal cut I make sure it's at least a 22, 45 degree cut, whatever. So if there's any water, it sheds out. Um, any any horizontal stuff like this, you, you always have to think about water. I know it's an overkill. We split it and then that's how we just fed the cable through this groove. You can use a knife or, or uh, something to keep this place so you don't scrape off any insulation from the wire. Works great with wires.
is the worst uh, when this happens just leave it there I'm gonna try to pound it in uh, if I can't I'm just gonna cut it off uh, this is how you trim a window correctly this horizontal piece underneath the window goes to this edge and then the sides go to this edge and then the top piece is going to go all the way here, right? That's how you shed water the best. And you can see that there is a gap. We want that gap. If there is no gap, even if you put caulk on it, that caulk is going to crack. With, the, with this little gap, I can actually push caulk between the two trams and it's going to be beautiful. You also have to know what's behind the wall, what's behind the OSB board. So I know for a fact there is only one stud here, so that's why I didn't nail here, because only the OSB board would hold the nail, and it's not going to do anything. So I don't, even, I don't even bother. Above the window, you have a nice little, you know, beam, so you can actually nail every, anywhere you want. And you also leave a gap between the trim and the, and, and the window, right? Try not to get too close to the window because there's a window, there's a lip, right? That's how uh, the window stays in all the way around. If I get too close, I'm gonna crack the plastic. I don't want that. I 
try to stay away, I would say, an, at least an inch from the edge so you don't blow out the edge of the trim. And I stagger it like that, you can see the nail. This is the typical example. You don't nail this, you just cut it off. If you are good with a hammer, you can nail this in. Another very important thing. When I have trim at corners, I don't ever cut it straight. I don't do that because you can see that it's beveled. With this, it acts like a drip edge. If you cut this trace, if you cut this straight, water is gonna go all the way on the bottom and it's gonna get to the concrete. With this, it's gonna dip, drip right this, so it acts like a drip edge. That's what you do. This is how you get started. You rip a one inch strip from the plank and you already, uh, Keep in mind that uh, we need a 1 16th of an inch between trim and plank. So every time you have something like that, keep that gap. And you basically nail this all the way. About a foot. Uh, I'm going to sink all the nail heads and everything. All the way along the edge. Basically it should be perfectly in line with the stud. The sitting on the concrete so it's basically the bottom of the osb board and then we're going to start installing planks all the trim is up except there because we're gonna i mean yeah you have to be smart right you have to plan it out so instead of putting up two three and a half inch trim and then a tiny little you know plank i'm gonna actually get wider trim here we don't have that today it's gonna be later and we're gonna put that there so it's gonna be two trim right next to each other and that's how we're gonna do also here i'm not gonna cut planks like that forget that you're gonna crack it it's gonna be impossible to caulk correctly so i just go with the wider trim so yeah you have to you have to be smart about it and you have to plan it out correctly all the trim is up And now it's just planks. Every time there's a seam, you put this behind it. So the idea is that even if there was any any water in the wall, this is gonna help uh, the, the the wall to shut the water outside. So and basically, if you do this alone, you only I only need half really with the first row, you know, the strip and then the first row. And after that, I'm going to use the hardy board hangers. And at that point, you are totally self sufficient. You don't need help. So. That's why 
I just transferred every single mark so I can see exactly where the cells are. For whatever reason, the nail is not perfectly flush. You fix it. Very important to, to get this cut, this seam, when it's stuck. If you don't do that, the only thing that holds it is an OSB board. That's not going to hold the nail. So over time, with the wind or everything, this bottom is going to flare up. And this seam is going to be awful. You can see that it's perfectly flush. And this is not going to go anywhere. This is the kind of hanger I really like. Not the fancy one from Lowe's or Home Depot for $80. I think these are like $23. These are way better. That, that green stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna add the link to this in the description. The way you use it, you put it right at the end, and you make sure that you put the plank in this. start nailing from the middle, more or less, you always push the bottom in, right? Because if you leave it like that, this is not going to look good. Every single row you check. No most. For small cuts like this, I like to use an angle grinder with a diamond blade.
want to breathe this stuff in so I didn't take a breath while I was cutting. This is a spot where we have 200, about 200 inches between the windows. What most contractors do, they stagger all the cuts, all the seams, so they are at random spots. So in this situation, when I have to, I have to work with 200 inches, what I, what I do, I actually run a, the whole length, one whole piece of plank, let's say on the right side and then I do from the left side and then another one from the right side so the seams hopefully you can see uh, they, every other row has the seams on the same spot hopefully you can you can see that so it's not perfectly staggered but if you are willing to work with this if this is what you do then you know, you can, the, the length of the planks will be identical, so you can go way faster. You don't have to measure every single piece. That's the benefit when you do something like that. The other thing, you're going to run into issues where something penetrates the wall. And in this particular situation, you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the top piece out from the plank that goes up here and the next one I'm gonna take the bottom out right I have another interesting situation where this water bit was really close again you have to be smart about that I don't normally do when I have something like this I don't normally do other cats than uh, anything else other than vertical cuts so you can see that I wanted to cut this out however it would have left only this tiny little sliver I didn't want to do that so what I ended up doing I cut a v-shape out and then I used caulk to glue it back so this is perfectly watertight you can see and hopefully you can tell up here I actually put an angled cut so if there's any water behind the wall it's gonna shed outside you always do that. This is going to be all the way cocked, right? Another thing, we have outlets, we have a light. I always cock all the way around and then I leave a hole on the bottom. The, the reason why I do that, if there's any water behind the wall or between the, the plank and this light fixture, it can come out. If I were to close this, then the water that goes behind would just fill all the way up until it starts, you know, going inside. So I want the water to leave. That's just like a, a shower. 
you don't caught the bottom. Same here. This outlet is caught all the way around. But on the bottom, I cut that little hole so the water can come out. And that is why you start with the longest sides. Because you will leave these small areas to the end so you can use up all the leftover stuff from the big cuts. That is one thing. The second thing, when you have small cuts like this, the hangers don't fit. So what you do, you transfer, you take a level and you transfer the bottom of these planks to the other side and you mark them. I have a 72 foot level. I just run it across, make sure it's level, transfer all the lines. And when I nail these on, I take my short level, make sure it's level and then I shoot it up. And you move, you line up, you know, the, the corner like that. And you go all the way up. That's how you do small cuts. And save a lot of money in the same time. When a trim meets another trim, I always glue them together. I put the same caulk that we have been using between the two trim. So... Nice bead. Also down here, you actually, the OSB didn't reach all the way. So I'm gonna fill this up with caulk as well. So bugs can get in. My method of doing the last row is uh, using siding. I hate to put trims up here. It always looks weird. Uh, I just use regular siding. So I measure one and a quarter inch from the top edge of this one down. And then I measure all the way up and that's how I cut this top piece. Also very important to mention that, you know, when the window is this close, to the soffit, uh, very hard to get proper support in this small area. So what I normally do, I put a shim, a composite shim, angled this way, so that's gonna keep the angle of the siding. I mark where these are, and I'm gonna nail the siding that goes up here, right in this spot, like uh, an inch below the the soffit so yeah and we keep using remember this uh, flashing that's the last row this is the best caulk on the market not the fast drying one this is a, this has a 40 year warranty, pretty awesome stuff. And you go from top to bottom.
I always use the leftover to also caulk the nail heads so it's gonna be completely watertight and I try to push it into the grain touch up the edge I'm doing the final walk around on this house and I figured I would show you because there were some tricky parts uh, you can see that the electrical stuff I was talking about is all caulked, very nice and neat. Uh, the windows, uh, we talked about the trim, long piece on the top, on the bottom piece short, and then you run the sides like so. Everywhere, one eighth of an inch gap. And again, I don't put trim on top ever I hate that another window so this house just so you know these are very important statistics is 15 about 1500 square feet and the two of us were working on it about 60 hours each so 120 man hours we haven't done the soffit we will do the soffit that's why I haven't clocked that yet uh, we talked about that corner, everything is trimmed exactly the same way. Very nice. Uh, vent hole, that's going to be uh, fixed later. Um, there's going to be a cover on it. And that's the door. So, this area was super tricky because as you can see there is not much room for planks so what we ended up doing you know the trim on the corner that's always three and a half inch trim and you run it all the way on the top uh, you guys remember I do a 22 degree cut on the uh, on the bottom so it acts like a drip edge so there were some areas however like this guy where we needed something wider so we put these trim on because that's defined by the corner and I fill this up with a bond by six trim. So you can see how it's trimmed. That's that's a plank that comes in, right? So and this area was even more tricky because it's it's a window, but it's essentially the same deal. And unfortunately, this was so what this distance was so much that not even a, a one by four trim worked here so i actually had to rip a one by six trim so what we ended up doing this is an uncut one by six trim so i push this trim out as much as i can so this trim the size gets as close as possible to the regular size trim so it's currently um three and uh, three quarter inch wide and again when we worked with you know trim next to each other I always put caulk between the two so it's completely glued together like that so that's a one by six trim that's a one by six trim one by four one by six one by four so that that corner was kind of tricky that way and this is also the same concept one by four one by six one by four one by six one by four and that's how the top is done it's a one by four all the way across and that's a plank oh yeah uh, very important we talked about it I believe but I want to mention you see that I want to keep the angle the same way so there is a shim underneath wherever I have a nail so there is a shim there there is a shim there, there is a shim there on the bottom, so I keep the slope for the planks, so it's nice and even everywhere. This area wasn't too bad, and again, we left this to the end because these are the type of small areas where you can use most of the leftover, so you can save money. We barely have any leftover, to be honest with you. I always calculate with 10% more when I buy stuff. But yeah, we have a whole bunch of leftover, so we did a good job.
So yeah, I honestly think that you know if you have the right tools and the patience, you can get a house like this done. Probably not 120 man hours total. Uh, it takes some practice. I've done a few houses myself, but yeah, the best part is you know if you screw up a plank, you rip it off, and you put on a new one. So yeah. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you will do something like this in the future. I highly encourage it because you can actually save a lot of money. A lot of contractors, they charge for a job like this in the Austin, Texas area, $20,000, you know, $15,000. Material for this house was $3,500, but we have a ton of leftover, so we're going to take this back to Lowe's and, and get some of our money back. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you liked it and maybe subscribe. I'm going to have a whole lot more. If you have any questions, feedback, please let me know. We can learn from each other. Thank you. Have a great day and bye.